Ebube thought he was joking, so he began to laugh. <laughs> Funny man, who else but you has up to 200 bars of gold in this entire village? Even the king cannot afford it. Or do you want to marry your niece? In a faraway land, there lived two brothers, Obi and Ike. And just like their names, Obi was known for his good hearts and Ike for his strength. However, Ike was a nuisance to the villagers. Oftentimes, he would go around with his group, bringing terror to everyone. The villagers finally became sick and tired of losing their properties to them, so they reported to their king, Igwe, you must do something. They take a huge part of our profits every day, leaving us with very little to take care of our families, their spokesman said. After the meeting, the king thought for several weeks for a solution to stop Ike and his group. He knew that there was no need to order their arrest because how many of them could he arrest? The group was growing rapidly and was even stronger than the village warriors. Finally, he thought of some possible solutions, so he gathered his chiefs and presented two options to them. We can get help from the neighboring village and take them down, which might probably not work, or we could give them a lot of gold from our village reserve in exchange for the promise of peace and security in the village. The chiefs thought deeply about the king's suggestions and voted to enrich them because it came with the condition of protection for the villagers. About a week later, a messenger went to Ike's house and said to him, The king wants to enrich you with plenty of gold in exchange for peace and your protection. He has also invited you and your group for a private banquet. But Ike thought it was a trap to end his life. So he said to his group, nobody should attend. We will not live their life. But Obi overheard them talking and became very interested in the king's offer. So he waited for the group to leave before approaching Ike. My brother, I think you should go. The king wants to change your life. But Ike shunned his younger brother, saying, Walk him. Do you want the king to kill me? If something happens to me, who will be there for you? And Ugoma, will I abandon her too? Ugoma was Obi's two-year-old daughter, whom he had gotten from a love affair he had in the past. But unfortunately, her mother passed away during labor. It was for Ugoma's sake that Obi asked Ike to consider the offer. He knew his brother would help them out if he became rich. Obi wanted his baby girl to have the best life. All night, Obi's mind was on the king's offer. So the next day, he went to his brother again, but this time with a plan. Let me go and represent you and the group at the king's palace. My heart tells me that it is safe to go. When I return with the gold, I only ask for a small portion for Ugoma and myself. Obi Obi, Ike said, laughing. You will not come out of that trap. Why are you being stubborn? Count me out of this madness. Ike responded. But Obi challenged him, saying, Ike na, I will go to the king's palace and successfully bring the gold back home. Ike looked at Obi with so much doubt, then shook his head and said, Small boy, Oga gold, you can keep all the gold when you return with it, he said, mocking Obi. He was sure Obi would not dare to go to the king's palace, but he was wrong. On the day of the private banquet, Obi waited for Ike to go on his morning market raids. Once he was sure he had gone, he took his daughter to a friendly neighbor 
But before he left, he hugged the goma tightly, assuring her that he would be back. After a long walk, Obi arrived at the king's gate and immediately he shouted at the top of his voice, I am safe, do not fire. He wanted everyone at the palace to believe he did not come alone. The guards at the gate immediately announced his arrival and the king asked them to usher him in. Where is Ike? Where are his boys? The king asked in worry. But Obi laughed and said, They can see you, but you cannot see them. As some of you might already know, my name is Obina, Ikenna's only brother. He has sent me here to represent the group, and I can assure you that if you try to hurt me, the village will suffer for it. And to ensure my safety, I must go out every 10 minutes to shout, I am safe, do not fire. The king and chiefs began panicking. They assured him that they had not called for trouble and immediately the king waved his hands at the guards and instantly they brought the gold out of the storeroom and after that talks of peace began. Obi diligently noted everything the king said to tell Ike and every 10 minutes he was allowed to go out and shout, I am safe, do not fire. After the private banquet, the gold was loaded in a wheelbarrow, and Obi, with the help of the guards, began wheeling it out of the palace. As they went, he started shouting again, but this time he changed his words. I am leaving, take your position. When the guards got close to his home, he asked them to leave because he was required to walk in by himself. Obi took the gold into his compound, and just in front of the house was Ike, who was surprised to see Obi with a barrow and a huge cloth covering it. My brother, we have done it. We are going to be rich, Obi said, dancing in joy. Ike uncovered it and was shocked to see a huge pile of gold. Obi handed all the gold to Ike and explained all the king required of him. Then he added, I am not interested in keeping all the gold like you asked me to. Please, give me a portion so I can give Ugoma a better life. But Ike knew that he could not give Obi a small portion. It had to be a significant amount of the gold, considering he took the risk of going to the king's palace and that made him angry. So, he asked his brother to wait for him to take stock of the gold so he could properly share the gold amongst themselves and every member of the team. Obi innocently agreed, but the next day, Ike went to meet his best friend, Ebube, who was the second in command in the group, and told him all Obi had done. Ebube rejoiced and said to Ike, Who would have thought that Obi would bring us riches? What a brave man. Ebube's words made Ike angrier. He was used to Ebube singing his praises. Days passed and his resentment for his brother grew stronger. He got upset at him for no reason. But Obi was too happy to notice his brother's change in behavior. One day, Ike said to Obi, Let's go on a walk. I want to discuss the distribution of the gold with you. Obi happily went with him and for a long time they kept walking. When Obi was getting tired, he said to his brother, where exactly are we going? You said you wanted to discuss the gold but you have not said anything, rather we have been walking in silence. Ike looked at his brother and responded, there is a feeling in my heart and I need to feel better. Obi was confused by what he said, but he suddenly stopped thinking about the gold. He began to think of his brother instead. Was he okay? What exactly was wrong with him? So he kept silent until they arrived at a huge waterfall. Finally, Ike stopped walking, looked at his brother and said, 
I need to feel better, he said again. Then Obi responded, It's obvious I can help you out. My brother, I would do anything for you. What do you want? Jump, Ike said. Jump into the waterfall. I don't want to see you again. My heart will feel better after that. Obi became very scared. He had never seen that look in his brother's eyes and instantly he knew what this was all about. Obi knelt and started begging. I am sorry I asked for the gold. You can keep it all. Just, just let me go home to my daughter and we will live and go far away where you will never hear about us. But Ike was never going to allow that. He wanted Obi completely out of the picture. So he said more aggressively, Obina, jump. I don't want to be the one to push you in. You know you don't stand a chance against me. If you run, I will outrun you. If you fight me, I will win you. And if you scream, nobody will hear you. We are in the middle of nowhere. Obi knew Ike was right. But all he could think of was his Ugoma. He was sure he would never see her again. So he said to his brother, My daughter, please look after her. That's all I ask. He said in tears. And slowly, he walked close to the waterfall and jumped to his death. Immediately, Ike rushed home and waited patiently for news about his brother to reach him. The next day, Ebube rushed into the compound to inform him of his brother's demise. My leader, news about Obi just reached me from a villager, he said, with so much sadness in his voice. He managed to break the news as he also prepared to console his friend. But he soon realized his friend was pretending to feel remorse. Ebube knew Ike so well that he could read his emotions. So with his voice shaking, he asked, Ike, I'll give you one nigga. Ike, realizing he had been caught, answered, He jumped. I did not push him. <sighs> Ebube shook his head in pity. He knew it was Ike that led him there. It was a tactic they used to finish off people when they did not want their blood on their hands. But regardless, he understood his leader came first. So there and then, just as Ike expected in his heart, the secret stayed between them both. Twenty years passed after the incident, and a lot of changes occurred. Ike was not the richest man in the village, even richer than the king. He kept all the gold to himself, only giving a little to Ebube, and his group members did not dare to oppose their terrible leader. Ike also did not keep to the demands of the late king and chiefs. Rather, he became more of a nuisance, spreading his terror to other villages. He formed alliances with other great kings because they would always hire him and his group for dirty deeds. Ugoma, on the other hand, grew into a wonderful woman. Although she was taken care of by her uncle, who planned to honor his brother's last words, she had a hard time with the villagers because no matter how good she was to them, they judged her based on her uncle's reputation. Some of her friends would hide to talk to her to avoid problems with their parents. And although the young bachelors were interested in her, it was difficult to convince their parents to become in-laws with the terrible Ike. However, there was a young man called Cheta who was willing to take a chance with Goma. And she was very excited because it meant she would go on to start her own family. One day, Cheta sent one of Ugoma's maids to call her to their favorite spot where they always hid to talk. And Ugoma, in happiness, abandoned all she was doing to go and meet her love. 
But as she approached Cheta, she realized he was not smiling as usual. Cheta, Ogini, is everyone okay? She asked him. Tearing up, Cheta looked at her and said, My father said no. Ugo may have tried to convince him, but it, he threatened to disown me. Ogoma fell to the floor and began crying. Not again. Not again, she kept mumbling to herself. She thought her relationship with Cheta would sail through. Aside from Cheta, she had been disappointed by five other men because of her uncle, Ike. Cheta shook his head and walked away. His relationship with his father was very important to him. In tears, Ogoma walked to her only friend's house, Chijoke. He was the only son of Ibube, the second in command. Chijoke was the only one who could boldly visit Ugoma in her house because of the relationship his father shared with Ike. When he saw Ugoma approaching him with tears in her eyes, he knew exactly what was wrong before she spoke. Ozokwa, Chai, Ugoma. It is well, he said to her. After he was able to calm her down, Ogoma said to him, Maybe I am destined to pass away without ever getting married. When you have your kids, I will take them as mine too. That way, people will not call me barren. She began to laugh to reduce her pain, and Chijoke joined in her laughter. But underneath his laughter was frustration. He had loved Ugoma for as long as he could remember, but he did not want to lose his friendship with her, so he buried his feelings. But as he sat with her that day, he began to think that she was indeed his wife, because all her suitors had disappointed her. So for the first time, he confessed his feelings. Ugoma, I, I can marry you. I, I mean, I mean, I want to marry you. I have loved you for a long time. Ugoma was quite surprised. She never thought Chiji looked at her that way. I'll leave you to think about my proposal. I'll be here waiting when you decide on what to do. After his love confession, they told each other farewell and Ugoma went home thinking of what Chiji said to her. As she cried herself to sleep, she realized that she may have to accept his proposal. Not because she loved him, but because that had to be her fate. At least, I will have my own family one day. And Chiji will not treat me harshly, she thought to herself. Days passed, and she told Chiji she would accept his proposal, and he was very excited. Soon, both Ike and Ebube were involved, and plans began for the bride price to be paid. Two days before the event, Ike informed Ugoma that an important guest would be visiting. Make sure the maids understand everything they are meant to be doing today. This visitor is very good for business. Ugoma did as she was told and eventually retired to her room. But in the evening, her uncle knocked on her door, beckoning her to step out of the room. Uncle, is everything okay? She asked him. Ugoma, your marriage with Chijoke is cancelled. In one month, the guest that came here today will be coming to pay your bride price. Ike answered, and immediately he walked away. Ogoma was confused. Which guest was he talking about? The old man that visited them with his 15 wives. Was her uncle suggesting she became the 16th wife? She ran after him begging for clarity, but all he could say was, I am standing as your father, and whatever I say is final. The following morning, she ran to Ebube's house to ask him to plead with his friend, and Ebube, who was also very confused, told her he would pay him a visit to understand the situation better. But Ebube was disappointed when he met with Ike. My brother, if your son can give me 200 bars of gold, I will give her to him as his wife. Ebube thought he was joking, so he began to laugh. <laughs> Funny man, who else but you has up to 200 bars of gold in this entire village? Even the king 
cannot afford it. Or, do you want to marry your niece? But Ike was not joking. I'm done speaking, Ibubi. Anyone interested in marrying Ugoma should be ready to produce 200 bars of gold. That is what Mazi Afu is willing to pay for my Ugoma. Mazi Afu was the wealthy guest from another village that came to visit Ike. On the day of his visit, he met Ugoma and fell in love with her beauty. Ebube shook his head, wondering why his friend was so wicked. He finally understood why his son was no longer eligible to marry Ugoma. Could Ike not forfeit the money, at least for his own sake? So in anger, Ebube questioned Ike. In all our years of friendship, I have stood by you, never requesting anything from you. Even when you gave me a tiny portion of the gold, I never complained. When you hurt your brother, I hid it from the world. But I ask you for one thing today, and you refuse me. When Ebube was done speaking, he stormed out in anger. He was finally tired of his friend and wanted nothing more to do with him. But unfortunately for them, Ugoma was eavesdropping on their conversation. She ran to her room, trembling in fear. How could her uncle do that to her father? For many years, he told her stories of her father's bravery, and she never suspected he was responsible for his death. It was common news in the village that Obi fell off the cliff. It became clear that she was just a pawn in his game waiting to be used. How could he even think of her becoming a 16th wife because of money? At that point, all she could think of was how to make him pay. She thought for some days and an idea came into her mind. Just like her father boldly went to the king years ago, she decided to do the same. But she went disguised as an old woman for fear of being seen. Ugoma was given a private audience with the king and she stated her case, telling him all he needed to know. If you want to take down my uncle, I will help you. And at the end of it all, you will have access to his gold, which will add more riches to this kingdom. The king was delighted that he could finally rule his kingdom in peace. So carefully, they put their plan in motion. One night, Ugoma put herbs in the evening meal she cooked. The plan was for them to eat and fall asleep. While they slept, the king and his warriors came and slaughtered them. But before they arrived, while Ike was fast asleep, Ugoma went to his treasure room and took some bars of gold out of the thousands that lay there. She believed it was what her father deserved from his brave adventure to the king's palace. Then she ran as fast as she could out of the village, just in case the villagers decided to take her life too. After all, they did not like her. As she sailed away in a boat at night, she thought of her dear friend Chijuke, wondering how he would take the news of her sudden disappearance. But she knew she could not tell him her plans, considering his father was involved. She just had to be content with starting a new life far away from her old troubles. When the rest of the group heard of Ike's demise, some fled into the thick bushes in fear, while the remaining surrendered and got locked up awaiting trial from the king. And peace was restored to the village. Today I will be speaking to you about partnerships and I will be referencing Amos 3 verse 3. Can two work together except they be agreed? For partnerships to occur successfully, there has to be agreement. Agreement in purpose and values. But I've realized a lot of people neglect values, which is wrong, because values are like the foundation of purpose. It is usually from a person's values that you know if they can actually achieve a set goal. Now, imagine the king and his chiefs, assuming that Ike and his group could work towards a purpose of peace, when they were very evil people at heart, or Obi, thinking his brother would do right by him, just because they were brothers. Entering partnerships with evil people is like partnering with the devil. You will get burnt. 
I'd like to introduce you to someone I call the best partner, the one who died that we may live, Jesus Christ. He knows life can be hard, but he wants to walk through it with you. If you're interested in getting to know Jesus, you can start by saying this prayer. And after that, you can seek him daily by praying and reading the Bible. People usually recommend to start with the book of John. Secondly, there's this channel I think you should check out, African Tales by Uzo. I'll leave a link in the bio. It's really new, but I think she's a fantastic writer. So please check out her work when you have the time. Thank you. I've also had some creators reach out to me asking for background music. If you're interested, please send me an email and I might just be able to arrange one for you. And finally, I apologize for my absence. I've been very ill, but I am doing better now. And I hope you are all doing good. Thank you for watching this story today. If you liked it, please like and share with your loved ones and comment what you have learned. Some of the comments here make me really emotional. I appreciate you all. Till next time. Bye.